my sponsor, Nakmoy Nation, as well as Onyx MMA in Singapore. And this is my fight against Shalom Lek for the Loy Kertong Festival out in Sadahit. Um, I fought at this festival twice now, both times against Shalom Lek. Um, and this time I went without a corner, which was due to misunderstanding, really. My corner didn't show up uh, at the gym before we left, so um, I kind of freestyled it. And the first fight was two girls in the ring, so I just ran up to the blue corner afterwards and asked if they would corner for me. And so this little girl following me into the ring is the teeny tiny, super cute little sister. Her name is Chok, um, of the girl who fought. She's covering her ears because those speakers are so loud. <laughs> um, but this guy actually recognized me. Like, after I asked for him to corner me, he was like, You fought Loma once, right? And I was like, Yeah, twice, actually. So, wading through the crowd, getting gawked at. It's always fun. Always the weird left handshake. <laughs> It was, it was a bigger event this year than it was last year. Um, and last year I fought Chalonlek to a draw, um, and her gym promotes this event, so that was all kind of a big, you know, hissing and booing situation, and we rematched uh, in Katia maybe like three weeks after that or something, and I beat her in that fight. Um, but I was pretty determined to beat her decisively this time and uh, not get a draw or get hometown or something like that. Um, but Loy Kratong is a pretty big holiday, so it's lots of people out and about. And it's a very pretty day, actually. Lots of lights. These people were very excited to be cornering for me. Um, when uh, when I was shadow boxing, they were getting super excited and asking if there was a Derm Pond side bet on this fight or anything. I think they were trying to decide how much they wanted to bet. Um, He's gambling right now. I'm the uh, I'm the blue corner, so he's putting his pinky out and gambling. The thumb is the red corner, and the pinky is the blue corner. So you'll see people put out either both fingers, asking which one do you want, or putting out the finger that they're like, who wants to take bets on this? And so he's asking who wants to bet on me. You can see how big that crowd is. Whew. <laughs> That's a lot of people. I like when the um, when the garlands go all the way around, when it's a big loop. Um, I've been breaking them recently with my Ram Moy, so when it's a loop like that, it's harder to do. I think Chalamlek is a little bit bigger than the last time I fought her. Um, maybe like 51 kilos or so. Uh, that's not that's not a huge deal. Um, usually, when someone's bigger, it means they're a little bit less in shape. Uh, but she came totally ready for this fight. She was ready to go. <laughs> I don't know why she's wearing a green shirt. Uh, you'd think that she would know that she was Red Corner in her in her home production, but maybe she just likes it. We had actually fought on the same event um, soon before this fight uh, against different people. Um, and so I actually had missed her fight because I was getting my oil, but she, um, she knocked out the girl that she was fighting with an elbow in like the second round or something. Her name means Iron Shark, which is pretty badass. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who my corner is talking to. He's getting those bets going. They were from uh, Rayong province, which is one town over from Patia, or maybe a little bit farther than that, maybe like half an hour or so. Um, but we exchanged numbers afterwards, so maybe I can get a fight out there with them. I haven't really gotten to see Chalamlex uh, Rong Moy before, because I'm doing mine usually, so. It's cool to see what she's doing. A lot of them look really similar nowadays. 
Hers is a little bit different. Alright, so here's round one. And uh, <laughs> my corner didn't give me my mouthpiece, so I'm like, put my mouthpiece in. He's like, oh, you don't have to wear it. And I was like, uh, I want to wear it. And they didn't have it, like, they couldn't find it. So the ref comes over and, like, lets them kind of fish around for it for a little while and then just gets sick of waiting. <laughs> I've not fought without a mouthpiece for more than just one or two rounds when, you know, my corner wouldn't give it to me or forgot to give it to, give it to me or something. Um, I'm telling him to check the ice bucket. Nope. No mouthpiece. <laughs> so I just had to go in without it. It's all right. Clench your jaw. But she definitely noted that I didn't have my mouthpiece. My guard felt good in this fight, I remember. I've been working with um, Krumut at WKO a lot with standing in and kind of just holding that guard up, and I could definitely feel it in this fight. Pinu's been correcting it as well. I think the first time we fought, she was way more of a like defensive backup fighter, and she's more aggressive this time, coming forward and then kind of retreating. Yeah, that one clocked me. <laughs> I felt that one right on the jaw. I think she was trying to um, smash me with hooks in this first round. Got a good turn there. She's um, she's not great in the clinch, but she's got weight, and so she can kind of like, uh, I guess, stymie it. That was good too. She tried to elbow me and just got me right. I blocked it, and she got me right on the glove. I felt like. Terminator when that happened. I was like, yeah, I'm not cutting today, buddy. She turns. <laughs> so that's the end of round one. I think they had found my mouthpiece. The little one, or the middle one, ran back to the truck and found it. So I think I have my mouthpiece for this round. Trying to get my teeps going. She's, I don't think she's a southpaw fighter, but she would go southpaw quite a few times in this fight. But maybe she is southpaw, she stays that way a lot. This is the thing about fights, is that you just like wash over some things that should be really obvious, like whether someone is orthodox or not. And then she switches there. My bounce worked really well. Um, I didn't have that the last time we fought, so I think she was not really prepared for that at all. Trying to get my hands going a little bit. Punches and teeps in combination. I'm staying in much better than I used to. For for years and years, Kevin and I call it being on the porch, where I'm just kind of like right at their striking distance and not quite mine, and just standing there. Um, and I'm able to stay in to almost my striking range more, and it's not like hanging out at a bad distance, it's more like putting pressure in by staying close. There's that bounce. I was wrenching on her head hard, man. Probably had a sore neck the next day. She's pissed about it. <laughs> good punch by her, good block by me. Congratulations to everybody. Getting those side knees in, jumping on them a little bit. I wasn't doing that even a month ago. End of round two.
So my corner was talking to me actually quite a lot, but I wasn't entirely sure what he was saying to me. Um, it's one of those things where like you have limited vocabulary that you understand what your corner normally tells you because you've heard it a bunch of times, but if someone else tells you something else that you're not used to hearing in like everyday language, uh, you can be totally lost. So I'm not entirely sure what he's telling me. Good blocks there. I don't know why I reached for that one. Yeah, this was weird. Totally got like headlocked backwards. <laughs> Here she started just tagging that front leg, and uh, it looks far worse than it was because I'm like half trying to block, so it's collapsing the leg, and it really, really looks like she's killing that leg, which means that's what it looks like to the judges too, so um, whether that hurts me or not, it's scoring. Try to get her back a little bit. She's spinning out really good, like she's, she's getting to the ropes and then angling off. She's trying to style a little bit here. There's the bounce saving me from being sideways. I like those periodic thumbs up from my corner. <laughs> I did not notice those in the ring, but good to see that approval. Oh, knee in the gut. So she's going backwards, which can mean she's taking the lead, but if I keep charging forward, I need to score, and I'm scoring every time I grab her, so this is me taking the lead in a round where she's trying to steal it. Getting her with a low kick there. I quite enjoyed this fight. I was really relaxed. I liked having these people in my corner. It was, it was nice to be able to go there and like, I know what I need, I know what I do. Like, I didn't need someone to kind of coach me in the corner. I knew how to take care of myself. I just needed people to kind of like do the work of uh, being in my corner. So when you go and know what you're doing and people support you in that, it feels amazing. There is like no concern about, you know, oh my God, my coach isn't here telling me what I need to do. I felt very confident. trying to start out with those leg kicks again. Teep. If people are nailing your legs, teep them. <laughs> Take my own advice there. Yeah, so she's trying to wall a China me there, but I don't think she has a lot of experience doing that. I think that she's very successful in her style of kind of um, scoring and, and staying a little bit back. And here she's leaning back and starting to miss me. So here, just trying to put her in the corner. <laughs> trying, to, trying to see what's happening in that corner. I don't know what thing's in the way. She had much better stamina in this fight than she did a year ago when we fought. Um, she got really tired in that last, well, I don't know if it was both fights, but a year ago when we fought she didn't have a lot of stamina, and this time she seemed really game the whole time. It's me getting all those knees in. Here she's trying to style a little bit, show vitality. That's, that's good showmanship. Here, I had a good lock on her. When he was uh, when he was breaking us, I would try to give her head a little bit of a jerk to show that I had a good lock on her. There's the pull. I think this looks especially good for me because I'm obviously smaller than she is, so for me to show that vitality and then also show that I'm affecting her and strong, here I'm backing away to show that I have the lead. So now the question is going into the fifth round, because I just ended that round ahead, whether I start dancing off right at the beginning, or whether I go forward a little bit and then back off. 
and uh, it's a little bit of a fine edge. It's hard to know. It's something that I'm still learning because I've never actually been a like um, a head in the final round type of fighter. I'm more of a like go forward all the time fighter. <laughs> so I've been kind of learning it in this past maybe month and a half, um, and it's it's part of the beyond technique, but also strategy of fighting in Thailand. So here she's coming forward right away. So she's going to try to score and then be able to back up, but she has to score first. There, I'm just keeping her off so she has to keep coming. She gets this, like, awesome barrage right here. <laughs> and then she tries to back off. I won't chase her. So she's kind of she's kind of doing it right now. Like I'm gonna have to do something. I don't think I can just stay back at this point. She's trying to get me to chase her. I'm kind of doing it. <laughs> I'm kind of in the middle here. My corner's telling me to grab her. I just saw his hands go up. So here. Trying to grab her. She's so slippery. Grab her in the corner. Knee. 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 Now I can back up. Those hands, those are like, get out of there. You're done. Won the fight. <laughs> so from that barrage of knees, I get to back up. You can see in her corner they're telling her to kind of keep dancing because don't admit the defeat. But she knows she's got a score. She got caught in the rope and I kicked her in the butt. That was one of my favorite things. That's something you do in training, don't really get to do in fights. <laughs> and then both act like you won, <laughs> see how it shakes out. Sometimes you'll see people reach out and try to touch gloves, and that's the like, uh, do you acknowledge that you've lost thing. And I think that Westerners don't know what that is, and so they touch gloves because we automatically were like, oh, it's okay, dude, like, hand touch, and you don't realize that what you're doing is admitting that you've lost. <laughs> She's coming forward. If she really thinks she won, she should not be doing that. So I felt confident that I'd won the fight in terms of like reality, but I wasn't entirely sure how it was going to go based on, um, you know, favoritism and hometowning and that kind of thing. But I was happy with the fight either way, which is rare to feel afterwards. <laughs> My corner's happy. <laughs> I tried to pay them for cornering me, and he wouldn't take my money. I think they made money gambling on me. They're a very, very sweet family. It's all girls that are the fighters. Oh, that little one is so cute. She was obsessed with like helping to take off my wraps and she wasn't strong enough to actually pull the tape. <laughs> it was very sweet. I got this swag belt. So this is back at their truck where I found them. That was an awesome fight. <laughs> 